In this video, we'll be looking at the heart's internal structure. We'll be looking at the different parts and their functions as well. Now, before we dive into this diagram, let's just quickly recap on the different colors that are generally represented in biology diagrams. In exams, you won't necessarily get a color uh, diagram like this, but it's always good to know. So arteries are, are represented with red and they transport oxygenated blood. So on this diagram, all of the red is the parts that will transport oxygenated blood and then veins are represented with blue and they then transport deoxygenated blood, which has a higher concentration of carbon dioxide than oxygen. Looking at the terms on this side in purple, let's just quickly run through them. I, I found that when you understand where the words come from, it makes it easier to understand them. So pulmonary uh, comes from, it, ha it has a Latin root meaning lung. So whenever you see the word pulmonary, you know that it will pertain to the lung specifically. Then the next one is the aorta. So it's a Greek name actually given by the philosopher Aristotle and it means to lift. That could be because the aorta is one of the biggest arteries in the body and it helps suspend the heart in its position. Then the vena cava, it also has a Latin origin, vena meaning vein and cava meaning hollow. Then the atrium, so it's Latin and it mean, means entry hall, that is because the atria, so that's the plural for atrium, are the parts of the heart where blood actually comes back into the heart. And then the ventricle is Latin for cavity in an organ. So those are the different terms and their origins and hopefully it will help you make more sense of what they mean. Now let's look at this diagram on the left. So I put it here for a reason just because you can see the oxygenated parts and then the deoxygenated parts. Now it's important for you to know that the heart consists of four chambers. So we've got the right atrium, the right ventricle, the left atrium and then the left ventricle. So there are four chambers in total and then the atria are the top two chambers and then the ventricles are the bottom two chambers. Now as you can see there's a distinct red side and a distinct blue side. That is because the deoxygenated blood that you will find on the right side of the heart will never mix with the oxygenated blood that you will find on the left side of the heart. And that happens or that is made possible by this muscular wall here that separates the left side from the right side and this separation here is called the septum. So the septum is a separating wall that prevents the mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. While we are just quickly orientating ourselves here, in the previous video I mentioned that we would do the pulmonary artery and the pulmonary veins later because there's a catch point here. So as we know arteries transport oxygenated blood. So they should be represented as red and veins deoxygenated blood. So represented as blue. On this diagram, you will note that the pulmonary artery is represented as blue, which means it's transporting deoxygenated blood. The pulmonary vein represented as red. There's four of them, two on the left side and two on the right side. Now this is one of the few cases in the human body where arteries will transport deoxygenated blood and veins will transport oxygenated blood. The other time that this happens is when a woman is pregnant and the, the umbilical cord uh, between linking the mother and the baby, the umbilical artery also will transport deoxygenated blood and then the umbilical vein will transport oxygenated blood. So those are one of the few cases in the human body that it is switched. So please note that because if you incorrectly label it in the exam, you will lose marks. So now that we have gotten that out of the way, let's quickly look at the different parts and for that we'll look at this diagram. So let's start at the top here with the pulmonary artery. Now you'll see that it goes to the right lung and then there's a pulmonary artery that goes to the left lung. 
this uh, pulmonary artery that goes to the right lung is actually just passing behind the vena cava and the aorta so this whole branch here is connected so just take note of that so what does the pulmonary artery do it carries deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle to the lungs so it takes deoxygenated blood from this bottom chamber and takes it to the lungs to get oxygen we'll move uh, through the heart in a separate video and at the end of this I'll just quickly do a quick run through so you will understand the superior vena cava we've done that before so this is the major vein that brings in deoxygenated blood from the top part of the body into this first chamber so deoxygenated blood comes in from this first chamber from the top parts of the body and the inferior vena cava will bring it from the lower parts of the body so that line you see there is basically just the entry point of the vena cava into the atrium and then this bottom line is then also the inferior vena cava's entry point into the atrium so the deoxygenated blood is now in the first chamber which is the right atrium then we'll look at the semilunar pulmonary valve so that's this one over here we won't spend too much time on the valves for now we'll just see where they sit and uh, we'll do the valves in the next video so the semilunar pulmonary valve what does it do uh, this one prevents backflow of blood from the pulmonary artery into the right ventricle so this is the pulmonary artery so what happens is after the blood has gone into the right atrium it is pumped into the right ventricle and from there it is pumped into the pulmonary artery that vein in uh, that valve ensures that blood doesn't go back into the ventricle the right atrium we've done so that's the first chamber of the heart so it receives deoxygenated blood from the superior and inferior vena cava then the next valve is the tricuspid valve so that separates the right atrium and then the right ventricle so that's the valve over there what does it do once again as soon as blood goes in from the right atrium into the right ventricle it ensures that the blood does not go back it stays in that chamber the inferior vena cava we have done so let's move on to chordae tendinae now that's a very scientific name don't worry if you won't remember that one i think a more easier the easier one to remember is heart strings so the heart strings are these tenderness cords that attach to the valves so what they then basically do is they prevent the valve segments so the tricuspid valve from um, flapping back into the atrium because if that happens the blood will go back into the atrium so they pull on the tricuspid valve flap um, it's like those self-closing doors to ensure that the door or the flap in this case doesn't push back up because if it pushes back up it will allow the blood flow so it pulls on it to ensure that it stays shut it can open this way obviously but it ensures doesn't that it doesn't go back up so those are the heart strings the chordae tendinae so they are tenderness cords that attach to the valve flaps then the right ventricle which is this chamber over here can you see that the shapes are quite different let me see if i can get a different color here got so much red going on um, you can see that this chamber over here is the atrium then the right ventricle has got a very irregular shape uh, to the right atrium as you can see there so please just make note of that it stops at the valves uh, that is the enclosed part of the right ventricle so the right ventricle what does that do it uh, takes the deoxygenated blood and it pumps it to the pulmonary artery that will take it to the lungs the muscle wall let's quickly look at the muscle wall so the muscle wall um, is thicker at this bottom part you'll see you'll note that it is thicker at these bottom edges than it is on the sides and the reason for that it is that this po portion of the muscle wall of the heart has to pump very hard to ensure that oxygenated blood which we'll get to a bit later is pumped to the whole body through the aorta so it has to pump at a very high pressure and for that to happen it has to have a thicker muscular wall 
Next is the endocardium. So the endocardium is this these black lines that I'm now outlining with the blue. So the endocardium is the inside of the heart and it is lined with a thin membrane of squamous epithelium and that you would have done in animal tissue. You should know what squamous epithelium is and what it looks like by now. So you should know that the endocardium is squamous epithelium. Next is the papillary muscle. So the papillary muscle are these uh, portions that are sticking out like this. And you'll see that they are also attached uh, to these heart strings as I'm highlighting them now. So what do the papillary muscles do? They contract. So they contract. So they, they pull in on themselves to ensure that the heart strings uh, pull on the valve flaps, these flaps over here, to close them when blood uh, passes through so that blood doesn't go back into the previous chamber it came from. Next is the left ventricle, which is this whole chamber over here. Also an irregular shape, so this is the left ventricle. And the left ventricle basically um, is the last chamber of, of the heart where oxygenated blood will be pumped into and from there the oxygenated blood is distributed to the rest of the body as it goes through the aorta. The pericardium we've done in a previous video so the pericardium is uh, the, the sac that surrounds uh, the heart as, as a protective measure. Then the bicuspid valve is the valve that sits over here. So the bicuspid valve is the valve that prevents blood from flowing back into the atrium from the left ventricle because blood is going to go from the atrium into this left ventricle. So that valve closes off to ensure that the blood does not go back the wrong direction. Then the semilunar aortic valve is the fourth valve in the heart and this one separates the aorta from the the left ventricle to ensure that the blood does not flow back once it's in the aorta. Then the pulmonary veins. So remember pulmonary veins transport oxygenated blood, thus those red arrows there. And then the pulmonary artery transports deoxygenated blood. Now there's four pulmonary veins, two on the uh, left side, and then there will be two on the right side they're just not indicated on this diagram so they are actually coming from the lungs so the lungs would sit just around the heart like this and these pulmonary veins will actually go into the lungs and we'll look at that in the next video so what do the pulmonary veins do they carry oxygenated blood from the lungs to the right atrium, sorry, the left atrium, not the right atrium, I believe I said previously, is the first chamber that oxygenated blood will come in. Then that oxygenated blood goes to the left ventricle and to the rest of the body. Those holes that you see there, or those circles, those are just the entry points of the pulmonary veins into the left atrium. And then the pulmonary artery we have done. And then the aorta is the biggest artery that will ensure distribution to the whole body. You'll see that there's a little portion sticking out here. It's not the vena cava. It's actually the aorta that is branching and going behind the heart to take blood to the bottom or the lower extremities. These will go to the top part of the body. And that is the heart's internal structure. I do believe we have covered everything that we should have covered. In a following video, I will use the Shake AU app and we'll have a travel through the interior part of the heart. Please remember to like and subscribe to stay up to date with all new videos that will be posted.